When Choshev Orchim guests would come to the Rebbe for Tishrei, like Rabbonim, Rashi, Shivim, Mashpim, the Rebbe would want that they should test the Bochrim. Some test the Bochrim in Iglen, also test the Bochrim in Chsidis. So I remember one year when Reb Nochem Goldschmidt came to the Rebbe for Tishrei. Nochem Goldschmidt was known to be a big, big maskal in Chsidis, and they had the Gewaldik, Gewaldik, Chazbor, of explaining in Yonim Chsidis. So he was asked to come to Faher Arkite. So I remember we were all we came to a shul, one of the shuls in Crown Heights, and Reb Nochem Goldschmidt came to Faher us. But before we started, he told us that the night before he went into Yechidis. So we asked him, is there anything that he could tell over what the Rebbe said to him on Yechidis? So he didn't tell much, but one of the things he said is that his wife, who was known to be very brave, she, was, she, she, was able to, she wasn't shy and she could say things to the Rebbe that, are, that other people wouldn't say. So she asked the Rebbe a question. She saw that the Rebbe is sitting very long hours for Yechidis. She said, why don't we make a seder? that you should stop in the middle and you should bring in coffee and cake and the Rebbe should be able to, to rest in the middle and give him a and you should be able to drink tea or coffee, whatever, to make it, I say that it shouldn't be just that the Rebbe sits, sits all these hours for an Yechidus. So he said, the Rebbe answered her like this. The Shver said, the Friedrich Rebbe said, ask the Shaila, why do we only have on Pesach two Zdorim, the first night and the second night? Why don't we have a third side, the three Zdorim? And he said, because... We don't want to make a chazoki of seder. In other words, not always does everything have to be beseder. And that was the answer the Rebbe gave her. Uh, the Rebbe said, told, said this some other time also, but here he said this to her as an answer to her question, why there is no seder in the Yonim of Yechidus to give the Rebbe a chance to rest, etc., etc. Yuchva Tovshin Chovches came out on Friday. That they say there used to be, years before, that if Yuchva came out on Friday, the big Fabrengen of Yuchva was Motsi Shabbos. Shabbos was also a Fabrengen. And also Friday night was a Maimer. Now Yuchva by the big Fabrengen, the Rebbe would say a Maimer, Bossi Legani, that Shaykhaz of the Perik of that year. Many times he would also say it's Shabbos afternoon. And besides that, he would say the Maimer. Bossi Ligani, Friday night. Now, originally it was before Kigavno, which means after Kabbalah Shabbos, before Mairiv. But then later it happened that it changed, that the Rebbe said it after Mairiv. And they said the reason was because the time before that there was a lot of noise because the children were still there. So the Rebbe said it after Mairiv. But it used to be that the Maimer was there Friday night. Tov Shinchov Ches, everyone also expected that the same thing would happen. So when it came to Mairiv time, the Zal, the Shul was set up like by a Fabrengen. The Rebbe would say a Maimer. That's what they assumed. And the people were sitting in the tables and the Bochrim and the Yulite were standing on the sides. Not much like a regular Fabrengen or a regular Maimer that they expected. The Rebbe didn't give anything over. I think that the other years during the day, they knew the Rebbe said there'll be a Maimer tonight. And this year, Chofches, they didn't hear anything. But still, people assumed that there will be a Maimer. And everyone was set in their places. When the Rebbe came into Mairiv, I remember, the Rebbe turned around to Rabbi Groner, I think, who was walking next to the Rebbe, behind the Rebbe. And he asked them, what's this? Why are people standing like this? So he said, they're waiting for the Maimer. So the Rebbe said, no, the, he's not saying a Maimer tonight. And then the Rebbe said, tell them that they should learn the Bosi Lagani, which meant the original Bosi Lagani, it seemed like the original Bosi Lagani from the Friedrich Rebbe. And from then on, that stopped, that Maimer Friday night, in the case where each Shvat is Friday, that stopped. Our family lived in Cleveland. My father was for the Choshev Rabbonim in the city. He was a member of the Merkes Rabbonim, and he was very, very well respected. And he did a lot of inyonim in Afotis Mayonis in Afotis And by Fabrengens, when the Rebbe would give out mashke at the end of the Fabrengen, Koshel Broche and Simchasteire, he would give my father also a bottle. Now, the earlier years, it wasn't that he gave mashke, the bottles of mashke by Fabrengen, uh, after the Fabrengen by Koshel Broche, but even during the, but during the Fabrengen, the Rebbe would call up different people and give him mashke. And he would gave my father also. The Rebbe wanted that my father should see that there should be Chol of Yisrael in Cleveland. It's not like now where you could get Chol of Yisrael from New York and you always deliver it from New York, but then it wasn't like that, so the city should have Chol of Yisrael. And so once by, the Rebbe gave a mashke, the Rebbe said to him, 
with a smile. No matter if mashke with milk, you should mix the mashke with milk. He meant to mramis him that you got to work on the milk and the chol of Yisrael. And he was working hard on it. The problem was that you have to kasher the pasteurizer. And you have to kasher it with water that reaches the boiling point, which is 212. And it was very hard then, all those years, to make it go up to 212. So next time when he was on Yechides, he tells the Rebbe that they can't, the problem is with the Chol of Yisrael, but the kashering, the pasteurizer, it can't go up to 212. Maybe we could do it with less. And the Rebbe said to him, no, it's all designed to 11. You could go up to 211, but that's okay. So he said, but that can't work either. So he said, you should go up at least to 210. And that's it. And when he said that can't go either, Rebbe did not. He says, no, less than that you can't do. But Lebeil, they worked out, and there was Cholov Yisrael there. They worked out some system that it should be able to be done the proper way. For the next few recordings, I would like to repeat a few things that I heard from Isaiah, the Zalma Velenkin, who was the Rebbe's Malamed, lived in the city of Katrinislav. He was a good chaver from youth yet, from with the Rebbe's father, and that's why he moved to Katrinislav. And he told me a few things. So I would like to repeat a few things in the next few broadcasts. The first thing is, he told me that once the Rebbe's father's brother, Reb Shmuel, Reb Levi Yitzchak's brother, who was the Rav in Nikolaev, came to Katrinislav, I guess, to visit his brother, to visit the family. And he saw my Zayde. And he knew that Mazeda learned with the Rebbe. And I think the Rebbe was then about 15 years old. So he tells Mazeda, I want you to know that he, meaning your Talmud, and he called the Rebbe by his name, you should know that by now, is there boki in gant shas mit ala teisves, un in gant slakut teire mit ala ayins. That by now, he knows by heart the whole Gemara, the whole shas with all the teisves, and the whole Lakuta Teira with all the ayins, but no one the Lakuta Teira, there's a lot of places where it says ayin references, look up this place, look up this place, full, 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 that he knows all those by heart. And it's interesting that it's known that they asked once Reb Shmuel Greinim, who was the Mashpi on the Bavich, what he would like his Ganeidin should be. And he said he wants his Ganeidin should be that he should be Boki in the whole Lakuta Teira with all the ayins. And this is what Reb Shmuel said to Isaiah, that, that now he, who is just about 15 years old, I think that was his age, is a clore, he's already boki in gans shas mit ala teisvesen, when in gans lakuta teira mit ala ayins. Another thing that Isaiah told me, Ben Negei Reb Levi Yitzchak, the Rebbe's father, is that he once went into Yechides to the Rebbe Rashab, and the Rebbe Rashab asked him if he gives a shir in Chesidis to the people there, to the Balabatim there, and he said, yes. The Rebbe Rashab asked him, what do you learn? What are you teaching? So he said, now I'm learning Samach Vov. Samach Vov was a Hemshah that was written by the Rebbe Rashab himself. And the Rebbe Rashab asked him, where are you holding? So he told him he's holding like in the beginning, the third page, something like that. In the beginning, not too far in, into the Maimer. So the Rebbe Rashab asked him, for how long is the Shir going on already in Samach Vov? So he told him a few months, uh, quite a while. So the Rebbe Rashab asked him, What's taking you so long that you're only holding after such a long time, only holding like the third, fourth, whatever, at the beginning, the, those pages? So he said, because I must bear every detail. So he says, Lemoshel, give me an example. So he started telling him certain things that he says. Why the Rebbe wrote this kasha before that kasha, and why this comes before, and what's the deek in this word, what's the deek in that word? And he was telling it. And the Rebbe Rashab listens, and then the Rebbe Rashab tells him, the truth is, when I wrote this Maimer, I didn't have these things in mind, but everything he said is true. Something similar to that, he said, that he once told the Reb Levi Yitzchok, the Reb Rashab told the Levi Yitzchok, that I heard that when you teach Tanya, you say all kinds of biurim. We know that Reb Rashab wrote in a letter that people shouldn't say pilpulim in Tanya, and he said, I heard that you do say such things in Tanya. So he said, yeah. So the Reb Rashab says to him, I'd like to hear what you say. So for a while, he was telling him certain things that he said. So the Rebbe Rashab said to him, you could continue what you're doing. In other words, he agreed that what he's saying is true. Another thing that Maizade told me, that he was once sitting, I think it was by a Fabrengen, that Rebbe Yitzchak was Fabrengen, or it was by a shir that he was giving. But anyway, he was there when someone asked him a shayla. 
And the Shiloh was like this. We know it says in Tanya that things which are forbidden, which you're not allowed to eat, are called osur. The reason they're called osur, because the word osur means tied. Since these are things which are tied in Shodl Shlipas at Meis Lagamre, which is the real klipa that a person cannot elevate, you cannot be mevarer, that's why they're osur. Things which are mutter, mutter means untied, because it's not tied to Shodl Shlipas at Meis. They're connected to Klippa Snega, which is a lower level of Klippa, but that is something that you could be Mavari, you could be Maile, you could elevate. So he asked the Meshaila, there are certain things which became Osir that the Rabbonin made Osir. But before that, it was Mutter. Now, if it was Mutter before that, that means it's not tied to Sholosh Klippa Satmeis Lagamre. So what's the Pshat that the Chachomim made at Osir? If it's not tied to the Sholosh Klippa Satmeis Lagamre, then it shouldn't be Osir, then you should be able to elevate it. If it's only connected to Klippa Snega, you should be able to elevate it. So what's the Pshat that the Chachomim said that it's Osir to forbidden to be eaten or used? And this is what Reb Levi Yitzchok answered. He said that there are certain things which, even though they're connected to, shol, to not to Sholosh Klippas Atmeis, but to Klippas Nega, which therefore they are muttered, they are untied of the Sholosh Klippas Atmeis. But not always is the connection to Klippas Nega the same. Certain things are much deeper and rooted into the Klippas Nega. And you have to have a strong kayach to be able to be maile, to be able to elevate it from Klippas Nega, even from Klippas Nega. And therefore, in the earlier generations, when people were in a higher madrege, so these things, even though they're deep, deep into, Klip, into Klippas Nega, nevertheless, these people in the higher madrege were able to take it out from there and be maile, to be mavarer it, and to elevate it. But those other years, when the Chachomim made the Easter, is because they saw that the people now in the lower madrege, and they have no kayach to elevate it. Because it's so deep into Klippas Nega that you can't elevate it unless you're great. And since these people are not now from then on, people are not so great, that's why the Chacham said it also, because now Take, it's tied in such a way that you can't take it out. That's how he answered. Now I'm just adding that Lechure, the whole Shaila is only based if we hold that every Isa de Rabbonon is a Isser Chefze. We know there is a whole discussion if when the Rabbonon made something Osir, is it the Isser and the object, that the ag- object is forbidden? Or it's an Isser, and the person means they told the person, we forbid you from eating that or using that object. So if you learn it's only an Isser and the person, then it, the Chachamim could do it, even though this is Be'emes Mutter, and it still stays Mutter, untied from Klippe. But it seems like that the kasha that was asked was based on the Ashita that holds that the Isser de Rabbonon, like his Mashman from Tanya, is also a Isser on the Chefza, on the object. So the kasha is, if it was Mutter before, it means it's not really tied to Sholosh Klippas Atmeis. So what's the Pshat that Chachami made at Osir? And if we learn that they made the object Osir, what's the Pshat? And that's where he gave the answer that it's like a tied to Klippas Nega, but it's tied, tied so deep that unless you're Nahim Adrege, you cannot be Milet. And therefore, the Chachami said that it's Osir. Another interesting thing that Maizeda told me, that he remembers when they had to transfer the body of Rebera Wolf from one cemetery to, uh, to another, and he was standing there when the Rebbe's father, Rebbe Levi Yitzchok, was the one that was in charge and taking care. We know that before the Rebbe's father, Rebbe Wolf Kazovenikov, I think that was his name, was the Rovin Katrinislav. He was from the big chassidim of the Tzemach Tzedek. Actually, he called himself the Geilom of the Tzemach Tzedek, of the Geilom of the Rebbe, because he used to stutter a lot. But he got a bracha from the Tzemach Tzedek, and from then on, whenever he would have chassidus, he wouldn't stutter at all. So he called himself the Geilom of the Tzemach Tzedek. He was a Gehei Benerit from the big chassidim. After him, he passed away in the year Tov Reish Samaches, 1908. So a few years later, then they appointed the Rebbe's father. Instead, he became the Rav there and for the chassidim, etc., etc. So my Zeta told me, that he remembers that this was about 25 years, it seems, after the Ptira of Rebera Wolf, and the government wanted to make the cemetery into a park or something like that. And they decided that they're going to transfer the bodies of the two Rabbonim. Rebera Wolf was the Chesidah Sharov, then they had another Rav who was the Litvi Sharov that was there from before, also buried there. And those two people, they're going to transfer into the other cemetery. And when they did that, Maizeda was there, and Rebbe Revolf, the, Rebbe, the Rebbe's father, Rebbe Levi Yitzchak, was in charge, and he was taking care and telling him exactly what to do. And he said, Maizeda told me, he was standing there, when they took out the body of Rebbe Revolf 
from the grave, which was about 25 years after he passed away, and everything was complete exactly as it was when they buried him. He said that there were older people, old people, who remembered the Levaya of Rebbe Revolve, said it's exactly the way they put him in, the whole body was intact. And Mazeda told me these words, Bishaz the Rebbe's father saw that, these are the words he said, He started, tears started coming down his eyes seeing this. And then when they took out the other of it was like regular, like by regular people that, you know, the body decays to a certain degree. I don't know exactly what, but by the Belle of Wolf, everything was exactly as the way they put it in. And he said he saw it himself. My Zayda also told me that he remembered that once when Rebbe Levi Yitzchok, Rebbe's father, was speaking, and he was speaking deep in Yonim Kabbalah. Now, I don't remember if it was a Fabrengen or he was giving a drosha, but anyway, he was saying things that were deep in Yonim and Kabbalah. And basically, most of the people didn't understand what he's saying. So in the middle of his speaking, he stopped, and this is what he said. He meant, keine versteht nicht, a der man versteht dorten, er versteht. I think he used the word man. Which means, he said, you think no one understands what I'm saying? This young man that's standing over there, he understands. And he pointed with his finger on the Rebbe. Well, the Rebbe is standing on the side, like in the back, I think he said. And the Rebbe was about 15, 16 years old then. And he stopped and told the people that this person, this, I think he used the word young man, this young man, er versteht was er sagt. Once, when we gave in a sikh to, to the Rebbe for Lukut Sikhs to be Magia, so there was one piece that the Rebbe had said by Fabrengen, but we had reasons why we thought maybe that should not be printed. So when we gave it in, we made a simon on that, around that piece, asking the Rebbe if we should print it or not. So the Rebbe, when he gave back the sikh and when he's Magia, he crossed out that piece, put a line across that whole piece, which meant we shouldn't print it. But then he was magia certain parts of it. He fixed, made corrections in that piece. So when we got it, we were confused. The fact that the Rebbe crossed it out means that he doesn't want it to be printed. But then we didn't understand. So why was the Rebbe magia it? So what we did was we gave it back and we wrote to the Rebbe that we don't know exactly what the Rebbe wants. And we wrote why? Because he crossed it out, but on the other hand, he was magia it, which seems that he wants it to be printed. So we didn't know. So we asked the Rebbe again. So the Rebbe wrote, and I don't remember exact lotion that he wrote, that didn't I cross it out, that means that I sh- you should not print it. But then when we mentioned that we thought maybe it should be printed, because we see that he was my geet, so he just wrote, Mishum al tishkem be'olecho avlo. There's a posik that says, do not keep in your house, in your oil, avlo means something that's not correct. The Gemara in Ksubes, the Afutesam at Bay, says that you're not allowed to keep in your house a safer she'ena mugye. Really, it goes on a Sefer Torah, but the Loshan is a Sefer Sheinah Mugi. You can't keep in your house a Sefer that is not correct, that has mistakes. And the Gemara says, Mishum Shanemar al Tishkem Ba'olecho Avlo, because it says, do not keep in your oil an Avlo, something that's not correct. So the Rebbe was saying that even though he didn't want this should be printed, but nevertheless, he corrected it because he saw there were certain things that need correction, so he corrected it because it should be a Sefer that's not uh, not a novel, it's a safer that should be correct. So we see from here how by the Rebbe was, everything was exact, that when he saw something that is not correct, so he fixed it, so we shouldn't be over on al Melech Avla, but it should be a safer that's correct. In Tov Shun Chovches, Shabbos Parshas Chayisoro, there was a Aguda Yisrael convention. And by this convention, there was somebody who got up and spoke. He was Pesar Shashiva, Sam Yeshiva, uh, the Rishetavis of his name is Yud Gimel, and he spoke about the Posek where it says, Vayav Yitzchak Esesav Kitzayit Befiv. And he explained that what it means is that Yitzchak Poshet loved Esav physically because he pushed, gave him food, because he had a personal honor for him. That's why he loved him. And then he connected that to Lubavitch, that the reason Lubavitch is Makarev, all the Freya people, and he compared them to Esav, is only because Kitzayit Bifi, because Lubavitch has Hanoa from them. Lubavitch gets money from them. That's the only reason we do it. And they even say that he alluded that the word Yitzchok, the name Yitzchok, refers to the Friedrich Rebbe. And he meant it, Benigay, the Friedrich Rebbe and Lubavitch Bechlal. They also spoke by that convention against Mifzat film. And then 
they made this person who spoke against Lubavitch, they made him by the dinner, by the convention, uh, Ish HaKovid. They gave him an honorary title. So on Shabbos, Parshas told us that year, Tov Shechov Ches, the Rebbe made a big machoe, and the Rebbe said, hey, Tochen, that nobody was meich, no one protested. And not only that, they made him into Ish HaKovid. And the Rebbe said, how could he say such a thing? How could he say this on Yitzchok? How could he say that Yitzchok poshed because he had personal anoah? That's why he loved him. And the Rebbe went into the whole Ayriches, bringing proof from all kinds of places, from, from Rasha, from Gemara, from Chesidus, that the godless of Yitzchok. So they said, the Rebbe said, they said that they, he really meant Lubavitch. So the Rebbe said, first of all, Mishtei Tonder Shidduch. I'm happy that they compare Lubavitch to Yitzchok. And he quoted the Maisef and the Mitel Rebbe, that the one that massed him, Bishasi was talking later, he called him Rebbe. So the Mittler Rebbe said, you see, you yourself admit I'm Rebbe. So here also the Rebbe said, he himself, who's talking against Lubavitch, compares Lubavitch to Yitzchok. And the Rebbe said that this is not the first time he speaks. Already before he spoke against the Alter Rebbe, the fact that the Alter Rebbe made a Siddur, etc., etc. And the Rebbe said he has to go to the Moras and he has to ask Mechile from Yitzchok. Then the Rebbe said that he didn't only speak against Yitzchok, but against another Yitzchok. Darizal was also called Yitzchak. And Darizal Taichus, Kitzayit Befif, means that he loved Esau because there was a lot of things he could hunt from him, which means in the Tzut is Akdusha. Elamai, this guy says, Ainli Eisek Bemistoris. He doesn't care about the Yonim of Kabbalah, Yonim of Seder Seter, he doesn't care. So the Rebbe said, so he's going against the Gro also, because the Gro also writes that you have to learn Kabbalah. This was a long time the Rebbe spent a big chalik of the Fabreng and Fapasha tell this in this Macho and this Inyan. Came to Parsha Vayishlach, the Rebbe again spoke by Ariches and again took up a very long time from the Fabringen. And here the Rebbe added that they also spoke against the fact that there was Nisim in Eretz Yisrael by the, sec- the, the, the Six Day War, even though people over there know for sure that there were Nisim. The Rebbe went into the godless, the greatness of Mifzat Film, and he spoke about Mifzat Film. And so they tiny, the Rebbe said, they tiny it to me that I said that the same person who spoke against Yitzchok. Also, there was the one that spoke against Mifzat Film. That's not true. There were two people, two different people said. So the Rebbe said, first of all, I said that I wasn't there. The first time when he spoke about it, he said he wasn't there. He just heard it from people. So I heard it. So it's a mistake. So I'm telling you, I made a mistake. That it wasn't one person that said it. There were two people that said it. But what difference does it make? The ikir is there were people who listened and people who heard it. If they heard it from one person, they heard it from two people. And then the Rebbe explained why he said that he has to go to the Moras and Machpel to ask Michile. A whole Arich is here. And this took up a very, very long time with the Fabrengen. Then Shabbos Pashas Vayeshev, which is a third Fabrengen, it wasn't the next Fabrengen because in between Parsha Vayishlach and Parsha Vayeshev was Yutus Kislev, but Yutus Kislev didn't speak about it. So he spoke about Parsha Vayeshev, another other protim. He said that the tiny Tim, since it was two people who spoke, so Shnaim Shosu Apturin, two people who did something together, they're Potter, so it's a less Indian. So the Rebbe said, What are you talking about? When do we say Shnaim Shosu Apturin, if two people do a Malacha together, they're Potter, if each one did half of the Malacha? But if each one did the whole Malacha? In this case, each one, whoever said the one that spoke first one against Yitzchak and Lubavitch, is a whole, did a whole terrible Malacha, and the other one that spoke against Mifzat Film did another terrible Malacha. Now here, this time, Pasha Vayeshev, the Rebbe didn't speak so long about it, it was towards the end of the Fabrengen. But Lapel came out that the Rebbe spoke about it three times. We, know, we always knew that when the Rebbe came out about something special, like a special nifts or other special things, he would make sure to speak about it in three Fabrengens. So here the Rebbe spoke about it in three Fabrengens, and the Rebbe made this such a machoe, that it's seldom to hear such a machoe in such words like the Rebbe did here. And they take, when they heard all these things that the Rebbe said, they never... Cholim, they never dreamt that the Rebbe is going to go out so sharp against them. And they talk, learned their lesson that from then on they didn't ever do this again. In Sefer Amin Hogim it says, taken from the Kutu de Burim, that the Rabbeim, our Rabbeim, were very careful, very medagdic, that in every Kriya, every time there was Kriya Satayra, even Monday, Thursday, Shabbos Teminche, there should be the Seder of Koyen, Levi, and Yisrael. Well, we saw by the Rebbe, it wasn't like that. By the Rebbe's minion, they would ask the Kayan to go out or whichever other way, and they would give a Yisrael become Kayan. They weren't medagdic that you should have Kayan Levi Yisrael. Now, some people always were wondering is this something that the Rebbe Pasha didn't mind for whatever reason? Or, like the Rebbe said many times, that he didn't mix himself into Gaboyas. He said that in the name of the Friedrich Rebbe, in the name of the Rebbe Rashab, that certain things that the Rebbe Rashab and the Friedrich Rebbe were not so happy with what was going on in the Gaboyas things of the Shul, but he never mixed in. So maybe also the Rebbe didn't mix in. 
But I know that when my brother, Sholom Ber, became Bar Mitzvah, his Bar Mitzvah is right after Yud Shvat. My father took him to the Rebbe for Yud Shvat for that year, and they went into Yechidus, and the Rebbe told him about getting an Aliyah that was the next time there was Kriya in 770. And the Rebbe told my father, he's all betting them Gabai, as he's all betting them Kayim Zalaru, he's going to get an Aliyah. Now, since the Rebbe always got Shlishi, so there was no way that the Yisrael could get an Aliyah by any of the Rebbe's, any time of the Rebbe's minion. So the Rebbe said to him, he'd bet them Gabai, that he should ask, he should ask the Gabai, that he should ask the Kayan to go out, the Kayanim to go out, and Mamele, your son, will be able to get an Aliyah. So here the Rebbe himself said that that's what they should do. I believe there were probably many other times that the Rebbe said this, but I'm not familiar, but this is something that I know for sure that the Rebbe said to my father, that he should tell the Gabai to ask the Kayan to go out. Mamele, my brother, who was a Yisrael, should be able to get an Aliyah for his Bar Mitzvah. In the earlier years, like the Yudz and the Chofs, the guests that used to come for Tishrei from Eretz Yisrael would keep one day Yontif. That means that Simchasteira to them was really not Yontif, but Shmini Atzeres was their Simchasteira. And the Rebbe knew about it, because we know that the Rebbe would send us Simchasteira sometimes some of the older people, the older chassidim that stood behind the Rebbe's bime to get an aliyah. But he wouldn't send there to Srodike because to them it's not Yontif. And we know that the Rebbe knew about it. So I remember some chassidim Tovshin Chofa Aleph, which was the first year when they had a charter from the from Eretz Yisrael. A lot of people came. So I remember them having hakofes upstairs. Shmini Atzeres when downstairs was the Rebbe's minion. Upstairs they had their own minion. All that just rolled the and they had a coffee afterwards because by them it's Simchasteira. And after a coffee, they sat down to Fabreng and they said, Lachayim, as they said, after Zayim, because to them it was Simchasteira. That night was the Fabrengen. It was the night of Simchasteira, which was the Fabrengen before a coffee. So I remember by the Fabrengen, the Rebbe, middle of Fabrengen, asked, Where is Isaac Karasik? Isaac Karasik is one of the organizers of the charter. So the Rebbe wanted him to say L'chaim. So the Rebbe said, oh, Isaac Karasik, song L'chaim. He wasn't there. Why wasn't he there? Because he was there for bringing during the day, and he said L'chaim, so I guess he wasn't able to come to the Fabrengen. But Hayez, the Rebbe, asked for him. So must have been, somebody must have run to where he was staying to bring him. So I remember after a while he came. I remember they pushed him in right across the Rebbe. The Rebbe sat up front on the beam, and then on the bottom on the floor were all the tables, the long tables. So they pushed him in by the end of the tables that the Rebbe could see him. It was far, but the Rebbe could see him. So when the Rebbe saw him, the Rebbe out loud across the room screamed to him, Chengimach Kiddush. So he answered, Havdole. Because by him it was already after Yontif. So the Rebbe said like this, Bifarhesye? Which he meant the din is that even when Eretz Yisroldike keeps one day in Chutz Loritz, which means he's allowed to do Meloche on the second day Yontif, but not with Farhesi, not in public. So the Rebbe answered him, said to him, when he said in public that he made Abdullah, so the Rebbe said with Farhesi, and then he said Lachaim, and the Rebbe answered him Lachaim. In the end of the Lamets, the end of the 1970s, there was a Bokhar who came to learn bus in Yeshiva here in Miami from South Africa. And later we found out that he had a problem with his back because as he was a child, he once from the diving board jumped into the pool and hurt his back. And since then he had problems, but it was more or less under control. But while he was in the yeshiva, it flared up again and his yesurim, his pain was unbearable. He went to a doctor and the doctor gave him pills and it didn't help. I wrote for him to the Rebbe and there was no answer. And then a while passed, went to another doctor and tried the different things. It didn't help. I wrote to the Rebbe again. The Rebbe didn't answer. Happened a few times that I wrote to the Rebbe and the Rebbe didn't answer anything. Nothing. Which didn't. Till finally, I called Rabbi Klein and I said, I'm sending a letter to the Rebbe. Could you do me a favor and not only put it in the pile of the letters to the Rebbe, but give it to the Rebbe in the hand. So the next time he went into the Rebbe, he gave the Rebbe the letter my request about the bracha for this bocher and the of what to do. The Rebbe took it, read it in front of him, put it down and didn't say a word. Couldn't understand why. Finally, he went to New York, this bocher, to see other doctors. And since Rabbi Klein was a little bit involved, so Rabbi Yomin took care of him. So he came there and Rabbi Yomin helped him and actually gave him money, paid for a lot for his doctors and helped him. And he was un- under his wing. And nothing really helped. Till someone suggested he should go to a chiropractor.
So then he wrote to the Rebbe, asking the Rebbe if he should go to a chiropractor. That was the first time that the Rebbe answered. And the Rebbe answered these words, Kedai Lenasais. It's worthwhile to try. So he went to this chiropractor, and this chiropractor told him he's going to try different things. There's one more thing which is more drastic than the last one, that if the other things don't work, he'll try that. And if that doesn't work, then he can't help him. So he went to him to many sessions. I don't know, I think it was six or seven sessions he went, and he tried this, he tried that. Nothing helped. And the pain was still unbearable. Till the last time he came, he said, I did everything I could except this last thing, and I'm going to try it now. This was something drastic, and he had to lay him down, and he had to sit on his back and jump. I don't know exactly what he did. And this Bocher told me when I saw him in New York, he says he did it. He sat down and gave a clap, and it was supposed to be something to put the bone back in place or something. And he says, as he sat down and gave it a jump, he, the doctor screamed, I did it, I did it. And he put the thing into place, and that took away the pain. So here we see that the Rebbe didn't answer the whole time, and when he asked about the chiropractor, he said, Kedai Lenasis, and this is the chiropractor that helped. And since then, his pain went away. I haven't seen this Bacha for, for, for about 30 years. I don't know what, where he is or what he is, but that time, this was the only thing that helped the pain, and the Rebbe answered, Kedai Lenasis. In the year Tovshin Membeis, 1982, our yeshiva gave out a sefer called Likud Piske Aloch Omineg of the Rebbe. That means we took, made a collection of letters of the Rebbe and sikhs of the Rebbe that have to do with Aloch, things which were not included in the sefer Amin Hagim, and how many things were there already then. The Tovshin Membeis, we're talking many years before, and still there was quite a few, and we made a whole sefer out of it. And we asked the Rebbe if we could do it, if the Rebbe allows us to do it. So the Rebbe said we could do it as long as people look it over to make sure that it's right. But then the Rebbe added these words, that which means rumors, when you hear things that the Rebbe said this, the Rebbe said that, we should not put in. And the Rebbe wrote, why? Because many, many of them are not true at all. And the Rebbe underlined the word klal. And therefore, we talk, I didn't put anything that's from the Shmuas. We didn't even put things in that are from Hanocha Bilti Mugge. Because as much as Hanoch built Mugi means it's written down what the Rebbe said by Fabrengen, but since it wasn't edited and looked over by the Rebbe, we never know if it's exact or not exact, especially when it comes to Haloche. There we have to know exactly that the Rebbe feels that way and maybe didn't understand it right. Maybe the Rebbe just said it, Olympia Pula Balma just said it as a pulpul, but loved after that he meant that this should be Haloche. So we didn't even put in. The only thing we put in then was the Rebbe's sikh about putting, starting to put a Rabbi in a Tom's film from Bar Mitzvah, which was a Chiddush then. And that we did put in because that the Rebbe said very clear and he wanted and people started doing it, we put in. But like this, we didn't put anything in from the Noche built Mugi either. But certainly not from the Shmuas because Kama ve Kama Mehem ain't no Nechei Klal. I want to mention one thing concerning our work on Lekut HaSichas. There was a group of us who would take a Sicha, an old Sicha that the Rebbe said years before, look through it, learn it, and work on it, and prepare it in a way that the Rebbe should be able to be Magia. And we would give it into the Rebbe, the Rebbe would Magia it, and that would come out for that week as a Likud, we would call it the Likud of the week. And then after a while it would turn into the Svarim, and then finally turned into all the 39 Svarim of the Kutusichas. But the way it went was, we would prepare it to the best of our ability, that this should be the Sicha, the way it should be printed, and then the Rebbe would be Magia. When he was Magia, he made a lot of changes, he added a lot, he had a lot of Marmakemis, he added Horus, he fixed a lot of things. But sometimes, not only would he fix certain things, but he would make comments on the side to the people who wrote it. And sometimes the comments were pretty sharp. In other words, commenting, how is it possible that you make such a mistake? It was many times he would write the word mavil. Mavil means that's outrageous. How could you write such a thing? And sometimes he would even write mavil in big words. And sometimes he would write Mavil with three exclamation points, and sometimes with three lines under the word Mavil, showing how he feels that this is outrageous that you're able to write such a thing. I just want to mention one of the comments that he once made concerning something that we wrote. In the Sikha, the Rebbe said that the word Knani also has a meaning, besides being a person from Knan, also has a meaning of a Seicher, a merchant is called Knan. Where do we see it? So the Rebbe didn't mention the source, but we know, and Chassidus is brought down from a posik, a posik in Tanakh, where it says, K'nani biyodoi meizne mirmo, which there in that posik it means a merchant. So 
we wrote that Maramokim. The Rebbe wanted that the simple Maramokim is pushes from Gemaras, from Sukim, from things like that, or simple things that have to be written. It's not for the Rebbe to do it. That's simple work, so we should write it. So we wrote the Maramokim to the word in the Sikh that said Knani means a merchant, a Seicher. So we wrote on the bottom, the source to this idea is from the Posik in Tanakh, Knani Biyot Amez Nemirma. And the truth is, Rashi in Chumash, in Parshas Vayeshev, says also that the word Knani means Tagra, which means a Seicher, which means a merchant. But we didn't write that Maramokim, that source. So the Rebbe added to the source, he added Peter Shrasheh, that Rasha says it, and he underlined the word Peter Shrasha, and then wrote the Posik where Rasha says it. And then on the side, he wrote these words, a comment to us, and he wrote, Ha'af echad mikem chitas. Not one of you learn chitas. In other words, if you learn chitas, and you learn chumash with Rasha, you should remember that Rasha says in chumash that the word knani means a seicher. If you didn't write from Rasha, it seems like you don't learn chitas. So the Rebbe wrote, Ha'af echad mikem chitas. This was the comment that he made to this thing. And many other times he would make comments, and it seems like when he expected us to know better. See, those times when he fixed things, not expecting us to know better, he didn't write anything. But if he expected us to know better, he wrote this comment and other sharp comments. And it made that we should always try to be very careful to make sure that what we write is 100% right. And nevertheless, the Rebbe had a lot to fix and a lot to change, and added a lot, and even sometimes he added full si'ifim that he added in the Sikhs. I'd like to repeat the inyonim that happened around the siyum, the finishing of the Sefer Teireh, the Kabbalah's Pnei Mashiach, Mashiach Sefer Teireh. And even though everyone knows all the things about it, and even though so much was written about it, even when the Maimer was given out, that the Rebbe said by that Fabrengen, Tov Shimem Vov, that Maimer was given out, the, in the back of the Maimer, in the Kuntres, they printed the whole Skira Ktsorah, which means an overview on what happened concerning the union of Mashiach Sefer Teireh. And then later it's printed in Teros Menachem, the volume Nun Tes. Nevertheless, I would like to tell over the things around it and also the way everyone has a different way of looking at it, so the way I saw the Yonim that were happening. We all know that the Friedrich Rebbe in the Fabrengen of Leil Simchastere, Tov Shim Beis, the Fabrengen before Akofis, the Friedrich Rebbe announced that he decided that we should write a Sefer Teire, the Kabbalah's Pnei Mashiach, that we will use to be Makabal upon him to receive Mashiach and Mashiach comes. And he said that by MS he is able to pay for the whole thing, but he wants to be Mazaki other people. But Mela, everyone should buy an Os in that Sefer Teire. And he appointed a VA, the committee that should run it, headed by Harav Simpson, Rebelli Simpson, and they should take care of uh, making sure of the inyonim should happen. Lapel, it started on Bay's ear, that's when they started writing, and it started Bechashoi, it wasn't Bepirsim, it wasn't in public, but that's when it started. And the Sefer Teira was written, and it was almost finished, and they left over a few lines at the end, like we always do by writing a Sefer Teira, they leave over for the Sion. The Sefer were Shmai Effector, and he wrote the Sefer Teira, and it was left over the last few lines. The fact is, it was never finished. It wasn't finished then, and maybe there are people who know the reason. I don't know the reason why it wasn't finished. That Sefer Teireh was put away as is, without being finished the last few lines. Put away, was laying in the room of Reb Shmuel of Itna, 70. We know the room that now is used for the Yichud room after a chasen, after a chupa. That was the, known as Reb Shmuel's room. There, there is a shafe, there there is like a closet, that in that closet the Sefer Teireh was laying. Locked up. And we all knew this was like a mysterious thing. There was a holy thing. We know that in this and this closet is laying the Sefer Teireh. No one knew the details about it, but it was known that this is an, it was something that beyond us. We didn't know what it is, what about, and it's Mashiach Sefer Teireh. I even remember once I noticed that somehow that door of that closet was open and I happened to see it. So I saw the Sefer Teireh inside. I didn't see the Sefer Teireh, but I saw the outline of the Sefer Teireh covered with thick brown paper. And that's where it was laying for all these years, from Tovshin Beis, when it was started and almost finished, till around the end of Tevis time, Tovshin Lamet. I remember at the end of Tevis, we saw some activity taking place when the gate of the We saw the Sefer being taken out and somebody was Magayet. I remember those days, I happened to walk by in the back of 770, and the window there is to this room, and I saw Rabbi Zirkin sitting and being Magid the Sefer Teireh. This made such an impression that something is happening. 
It's Tov Shin Lamed, and something is happening with Mashiach Sefer Teireh. Till came to Shabbos, Parshas Vaira, Gimel Shvat, the Rebbe spoke about it. And the Rebbe said, now the time has come for us to finish Mashiach Sefer Teireh. And the Rebbe said, that this is Seirah, is that we should finish Mashiach Sefer Teireh, came from Eretz Yisrael. Some say it was even a woman who wrote this letter to the Rebbe. The Rebbe even complained why nobody here in New York thought of being Ma'ira that we should finish the Sefer Teireh. And he said, I found a reason for it, because the expression goes, Arum dem yam is trukken, around the ocean that's dry. Here it's around the ocean. Here is the center, here is where Lubavitch is, this is the ocean. And around the ocean is dry. And Bemele, therefore, people didn't feel, didn't realize that we have to be Ma'ira. But then the Rebbe said, but even the dryness has a shear. So dry that people shouldn't even think of it. But anyway, the Rebbe said that we're going to finish the Sefer Teira now, and he said that Vad that was appointed by the Friedrich Rebbe should be appointed now too. They should continue. They should be the Vad now. And he said people should now start again buying letters to the Sefer Teira. And he explained it doesn't mean a letter because all the letters were sold already in Tovshim Beis. But those letters which are left over, everybody could participate by buying a share in those letters. And he said those that bought earlier then shouldn't, don't have to buy again. But those that were not born, didn't buy then, or were not born then, they should buy now. And the Rebbe said that it'll be written for the, the shame all these people who buy. And even those people who don't know about it, and they're going to buy after it'll be finished. When we'll be finishing it, it'll be for them too. Like it says by Machtiz HaShekel, that when they brought the Korbanus with the money for the Machtiz HaShekel, they also included... Lashem, those that didn't pay till after it started already. Because it was also Al HaOsid Ligbis. And the Rebbe said that since the Vad is here, Rabbi Simpson was there by the Fabrengen, that he should announce the time when people will be able to come to 770 and, and buy the letter. And he made forms that people should be able to sign up and have a shtafetz in the letter. Now this thing that the Rebbe said then made such a hisayrerus by Anash, by Lubavitch, and brought such a bitochen and a moon in the Yonim of Mashiach. Why specifically? Not only because we're finishing Mashiach Sefer Teireh, which showed, okay, so we're going to be using it soon, so Mashiach is coming very soon because of this. But besides that, yet Tov Shin Yud already, the Rebbe said, that the Friedrich Rebbe said once, Beyom of Yi Adover Azeh, that Mashiach will come in his lifetime. But now there was Yutchvat, there was the Istalkis. So what's the Pshat? So the Rebbe brought the Yerushalmi where it says that by Shimshin we see that even 20 years after his Istalkis, it's still called Beyom of. So the Rebbe said that Loshin. So we were always, everyone was under the impression that by 20 years after Yuchvat, Mashiach will come. Because till 20 years, it's still under, it's Biyomov, and that's what the Friedrich Rebbe said. So now that it's getting to the 20 years to Yuchvat of Shin Lamed, and we're finishing Mashiach Sefer it has brought such a his is by the people that everyone was sure that Mashiach is coming now. That means people were 100% sure more than the Hisaitis in later years, we know Tov Shinun, Tov Shinun, all of those years, it was such a Hisaitis, the Rebbe spoke so strongly about Mashiach, and everyone was sure Mashiach is coming now, it doesn't come to the feeling that Anash, the Bochrim, Anash, the Tmimim, and all other people around who were part of it, who heard about it, were so sure that this is the time, now is the time for Mashiach to come. People went around to get people to sign up to buy the Bishtatvis and the letters for the Sefer Teireh because they knew this is negated to the coming of Mashiach. I remember myself, I used to give a shir in Chassidus to Talmidim Bochrim of RJJ. I didn't do it in the yeshiva, but I did it across the street. There was a old age home called Beis Teim Chateireh Vizikne Yisrael. So the Bochrim would come, about 20, 30 Bochrim would come from the yeshiva, I give a shir. But I never walked into the yeshiva. But this time, that week, after the shir, I walked into the yeshiva and I spoke to Bochrim, I spoke to Yungalai, telling him, you must buy a letter now because Mashiach is coming soon and we have to have the Sefer Teireh. Then, since this is in the east side, I went over also to Yeshiva Tiferes Yerushalayim, and there were Bochrim and Yungalai there too, and I spoke to them, and I told them, you should buy letters. I walked around, and I noticed some people behind my back were even laughing, smiling. So I walked over to them, and I said, now you're laughing, but wait, in one week you'll see what's going to happen. You'll see Mashiach over here, so I think here's your chance now. That's how Ogilicht it was that Mashiach is coming now. But in the beginning, we didn't know yet when the seam was going to be, but when it got closer to Yud Shvat, the Rebbe gave over that the seam is going to be Erev Shabbos of Yud Shvat. Yud Shvat was Shabbos, Erev Shabbos, which is Teshvat. And there was Takef Abrengen and the seam, as I will explain in the next broadcast. Yud Shvat of Shin Lamed was known as the Yud Shvat Hagodl because it was 20 years from the Rebbe's Nesiyas. And a lot of Orchim came from all over, from Eretz Yisrael, from all over. And the Rebbe gave over that Erev Shabbos, 
Friday after Chatzos will be the Siyam of the Sefer Torah. And the Rebbe explained the reason because by Meshach Rabbeinu we also find that he wrote on the day of his Istalkas, it says Zayn Oder. He wrote a Sefer Torah, many Sefer Torahs, but the Mephorshim say it wasn't really on Zayn Oder because it was Shabbos. You can't write on Shabbos. So he did it probably Erev Shabbos. So here too, since Yuchvat is Shabbos, so we're going to do it on Erev Shabbos after Chatzos, as close as it could be to Yuchvat. And it was packed. A lot of people came when the Fabringen was set up in this order of Fabringen. And a lot of Orchim from Eretz Yisrael were there. This was the first, actually the first U- the time that Yuchvat was supposed to be the first hookup that they would hear the Fabringen in Eretz Yisrael. And everybody is anticipating what's going to be by the Fabringen. But then in Eretz Yisrael, when they heard that Erev Shabbos is going to be the Sium, and it was the time the Sium was here, already there was Shabbos, so a whole Shabbos, they said later, they, they anticipated, they didn't know what's happening. They see him in the Sefer who knows, Mashiach is going to come by that Fabring and they're going to be missing it. Anyway, that's how the Yisraelis was. <coughs> the play about the Fabring and everyone was set in the places, the place of the Fabring was ready. Then we saw from far, because we were sitting in our place of Fabring by the steps where the Rebbe would come down to the Fabring we saw Rabbi Simpson coming down and behind him the Rebbe. Rabbi Simpson was in front, he was carrying the Sefer Torah. The Rebbe was behind him carrying a car, big cardboard box. It looked pretty strange. Imagine Rabbi Simpson is carrying the Sefer and the Rebbe is carrying a box. A box should carry a shamish, but the Rebbe is carrying the box. No one knew what's in the box. Maybe there were some people who knew things from the inside, but most Hamenam didn't know what's in the box. I'm wondering, what is the box that the Rebbe is carrying? Rabbi Simpson was walking in front. We could see him at the bottom of the steps. We were able to see from our place him walking. He felt uncomfortable walking with his back to the Rebbe, but he was carrying the Sevetera, so he turned a little bit as he was walking, not so straight, so he shouldn't be mamish his back to the Rebbe. Came, the Rebbe came in, sat down, and the Rebbe spoke a few words, and he said that this is Erev Yitzvat, and he gave the reason why we're making the Siyam today, as I said before. Then the Rebbe said, now we're going to say the Kapitel Lam Natseach Yancho. And Reb Shmuel of Itten should say that capital. The Rebbe got up, everyone got up. Reb Shmuel said the capital, posig by posig. And the Rebbe said that even though Erev Shabbos, after Chatzos, we do not say that till him, but that's only on the normal time when things are not regular, it's not as man rogil, so then we could say that Erev Shabbos. So he took a set posig by posig, the Rebbe stood. After he finished, the Rebbe sat down, and the Rebbe said to sing certain Nigunim. And then the Sefer took the Sefer Torah and finished the last letters. Reb Shemarie Factor, who was the one that wrote the Sefer Torah, came to the last letter. He wanted to give the Rebbe the feather. The Rebbe should write the last letter, and the Rebbe didn't want. The Rebbe told him he, he should do it. I think, if I remember correctly, that the Rebbe said to him, he's making him a shliach, but I'm not sure. But anyway, he told him to finish. And afterwards, they said the Psukim of Atoreso, and they were Machabe, different people. The Rebbe gave beforehand a Rishime, Bixaviat Kedish, of a list of every posik who should say the psukim. That list is actually mefursim, That and even the, ksav, the copy of the Ksavyat Kedish is mefursim. It's printed in Teres Menachem, volume Nuntes. The whole list, the way the Rebbe wrote it, each one, who should say it, and the reason why this person should be the one to say to say a posik. Some he said, because they're mashpim. I remember one of the things he said, that now we're mechabit somebody who sat in Russia in jail for spreading Yiddishkeit, I'm a serious nefesh. And I remember standing there, assuming when he said that, probably this is going to be the mental foot of us, but Lepeil, it was Reben Sheshemtev. Then when they finished the Psukim, you could see the list of the names in the Sefer. When they finished the Psukim, there was Hagbe and Glile. And then the Rebbe opened the box, all these standing, opened the box and took out the crown. People, when they saw the crown, it was such a beautiful crown and silver that everyone was so excited. And you know, sometimes when you see something new, some people go, ooh, it's exactly what happened here. When they took out the crown, the crowd, mainly from the Viper Shul, said, ooh, it made such an, such an impression. And they put the crown on, they ever put the crown on the Sefer Then he said to sing process station of Yerushalayim. And then the Rebbe went with a chuppah to put the Sefer into the Oren Kedesh. Now, I want to explain. The crowd was standing basically in the first half of the shul. The second half of the shul, till the Oren Kedesh, was empty. So they had a chuppah there. The Rebbe said, they said nobody should go to, from the place of the Fabrengen to move. 
So the Rebbe went and he said that the chuppah should be held by the four gaboyim, the four sticks of the chuppah should be held by the four gaboyim, and with the chuppah, with candles, he should walk to the Orn Kedesh. And the Rebbe walked along with them, they came to the Orn Kedesh and put the uh, Sefer Tere in. I couldn't see exactly what was going on there because we didn't want to leave our places, but we know that they went with the chuppah and with the candles. And then they, they came back. After they came back, the Rebbe sat down, the Rebbe made Shechionu, and ate a Peire Chodesh and Nupeire. And then the Rebbe said to sing a Nigna, and he said the Maimer. And after the Maimer, he said something, and that will be by the next broadcast. By this Fabring and an Erev Shabbos, Yuchva Tov Shinlamid, when there is the Sim Sefer Teire, Shal Mashiach. So the Rebbe said the Maimer. The Maimer started, Lohoven Inyan Ksiva Sefer Teire. And after the Maimer, the Rebbe just said that now that the Sefer Teire was finished, so now it's no more Mechuser Maise. We're not missing that to do the action of writing the Sevetera. So now everyone has to finish the Pachim Ketanim, the small little things that you have to do to prepare for Mashiach. And that should be Mavatl the Golis, and we should go out from Golis, Besimcha Tuv Levov, to be Mechabal Pnei Mashiach Sitkeinu. But then the Rebbe said, concerning this day, this is Erev Shabbos of Yuchvat, so there will be a Fabrenga Yuchvat. So I want to, unfortunately, you have to bavorn something, the Rebbe said. I want you to know that this is not going to be the Fabrengen of Yuchvat is not going to be like they call it here, a banquet or a dinner or an installation or a, a something sensational, a statement. It's not going to be all that. You should know this is a Hilula of a Tzadik, the Hilula of an Osi Dereinu, and there's no reason for statements, there's no reason for, for installments and things like that. The only it's a time to speak the and Yiddish Shemayim and the Yiddish that they should come down by pale by everybody who listens that they should do in it. And then we'll be Zeicher to go out from the Golis and be Aschal to the Gul, etc., etc. Now, when the Rebbe said that, and then you made a Baruch HaKrein, but when the Rebbe said that, it made like a certain feeling that till now the feeling was for sure, this is Mashiach, and Mashiach is coming now. And when the Rebbe said that, it showed that this is not exactly what it is, that maybe we will not be Zeicher, that this will be the time for the Gula. Came out to Shabbos, there was a Fabrengen of Yuchvat, it was a regular long fabrengen with the regular inyonim of Yuchvat that the Rebbe spoke like always. And I can't use the word, it was like a letdown, but it showed that we're not Zeicha. This is um, closer to Mashiach, but it's not, we're not Zeicha, that this is it. Someone told me he was standing in the back of the, by the fabrengen, in the back of the shul, and there were two, not Bav Chibachim, standing there. And it was about 12 o'clock. And one said to the other, he overheard him say, I'm going home already, it's late, I had enough, I'm going home. And the other one said, no, I'm not going home yet. I'm not going home till Mashiach comes. In other words, even by other people on the outside, who had any Shaykh to Lubavitch, it also made such a say that they expected that this Yuchvat of Shemamed, this is the time of Mashiach. So this guy said, I'm not leaving this Fabrengen till Mashiach comes. The pale of Fabrengen was over. And then, Parsha Pekudei, Shabbos Parsha Pekudei, the Rebbe spoke again about the Sefer Teir, about Mashiach Sefer Teir. And he said that there were some people who were against it. They were them to it. And they had tightness against it. So the Rebbe said, it's a big Rachmanes on them, and referred to them as the Sri Dei HaGolis, the leftovers of the Golis. And he spoke by Riches, but the expressions he used, that these are people that, they don't know between the right and left, they don't know anything. They have no idea in these new. I mean, yes, but how could they give opinions whether this is right or wrong? Since this is an Indian that has to do with Pnimi Satera, these Nyonim of the Sefer Teire and all these Nyonim that the Rebbe was involved in. So how could they give an opinion? If they're not, they don't know anything about Pnei Mesa How could they give an opinion? And the Rebbe said, it's Alderich, like the Rosh writes, that why is there a Din Halochi Kerav Bi Yisura Kishmul B'Mameinah? When there's an argument between Rav and Shmuel, when it comes to Nyonim of Yisur V'Hetet, the Halochi is like Rav. In Nyonim of Momenus, of monetary decisions, the Halochi is like Shmuel. So the Rosh says why? Because Rav's main Involvement, main occupation was in Yonim of Easter, so he was the expert. If he was the expert, the Allah is like him in Easter. Shmuel was mainly involved, and he was the expert in the moment, the Allah is like him. So people who are involved in things, they could give their opinion and we accept it. But these people, what did they know? The Rebbe spoke very far, uh, sharp against them. And the Rebbe even said concerning one of the people who are Managat, he said, he used the Lash Nagimora. He said that Kola Meitzar Lelubavich Naserosh. The Gemara you says, Kol HaMetzer Yisrael Nasarosh, whoever makes trouble for Yidin, becomes a leader ahead by them. So the Rebbe used that term here too. Whoever fights Lubavitch will become a Rosh leader by them. And he referred to people who were fighting, this person who was fighting, that he will eventually become a Rosh by them. And that's exactly what happened. 
that the Rebbe spoke the importance of this finishing the Sefer Torah, Sefer Torah Shel Mashiach. And from then on, there were many Shabbosim that the Rebbe gave over a hero that you should read, use Mashiach Sefer Torah to read Kriya Sefer that Shabbos. I don't know if all Shabbosim that they used that the Rebbe said, or maybe they asked the Rebbe and the Rebbe agreed with the Rebbe's Askoma, but Lepeil, this became a Sefer Torah that from some special Shabbosim they used this Sefer Torah a couple of Mashiach that came And we are sure and we hope that we'll use it very, very, very soon to go with a couple of Pnei Mashiach that came with this Sefer Torah because of Mamish. Among the things that my father Oliver Sholem did in Cleveland when they lived in Cleveland was that he used to make every Yutus Kislev a big Sude, a big Fabrengen. And a lot of people would come, a lot of Balabatim, a lot of Rabbonim, Choshev Eden, and many times, many Rabbonim would even speak. And at that time, when Maizeda lived in Cleveland, he was the one that would chazer the Maimer. And everyone would sit with open mouths, listening to the Maimer, because he had such a gvaldic, a special Kechaz body, he was able to explain an Indian, even if it was a deeper Indian Chesidus, that every single person was able to understand. When he moved from Cleveland to New York, the Rebbe told my father and Yechida, so now you have another job. Because my father used to always say the main speech by this Fabrengen. So the Rebbe said to him, now besides the main speech that you say, now you'll also have the job of hazarding the Maimer. And he did. From then on, he would, besides the speech, he would also hazard the Maimer. One of the Rabbonim that would come to this Fabrengen and would speak was Araf Yisrael Peiris. He was a Choshev Arov, an older Rav. He was a Talmud Chochem. He was the Yeshev Rosh of the Merkas Harabonim of Cleveland. He wasn't a Chosid, but he was always spoke very warmly about uh, Lubavitch, uh, about Chesidus, about the Skislev, about the Rebbe, etc. So it was the year Tov Shin Chof, I believe, that he was there and he spoke. And one of the things he said in his speech was that he has a Kashe. He knows that on the Skislev we start learning Tanya. In Chitas, we start Tanya over again from the beginning on Yitzh Kislev. It's, we start with the Sharblat. Now, on the Sharblat, in the cover page, there the Altarebbe quotes the Posik, Kikorev Elecho Hadover Ma'id. And if you look in Chumash, the word Ma'id is without a Vov. But the way it's printed in the Sharblat of Tanya, it's with a Vov. And his Kasha was, if in the Chumash it's without a Vov, why here is it with a Vov? And then he added, in the Sharblat, the Altarebbe continues and mentions the word Ma'id again. Levayer Eichu Korev Ma'id. This time it's actually printed without a Vov. And in the Lua Chatikim, the Rebbe writes that you have to fix it and you have to put in the Vov. So not only is it L'Chatchile written with a Vov, when it's written without a Vov the way it should be seemingly, because that's how it's in Chumash, the Rebbe adds that you have to add the Vov. And he doesn't understand why it is. And my father answered him something later. After Yuchva that year, when my father went to Yechidus, I was actually in that Yechidus too, the Rebbe asked my father about the Yutus Kislev Fabrengen, and he asked him about the Rabbonim, and he asked him if Raf Peiris was there. And the, uh, my father said yes, and he asked him, did he speak? And he said yes. And he says, what did he say? My father later told me that the way he remembers is that the Rebbe not only said, what did he say? The Rebbe even said, the Rebbe's gefrekt kasha. did he ask a kasha? But anyway, my father answered him, told him that he asked this in this kasha. The way he asked it on the word Ma'id, why it's printed with a Vov. And the Rebbe asked him, what did you say? My father mentioned what he said. And the Rebbe said like this, the way I remember it, this is Be'er of the Lotion he said. As it come in the name, that he's talking about Peris, as he's stating in the as Bishas Mishraib Tashtar, that's the way I think he said the word Shtar, that from the Alamo Shraib Moli, you always have to write with a Vov, Afila as he mocked it as Chosar, even if in the original, in the Posik, it's missing. That's what he said. The Chura, the Rebbe meant the Gemara in Abu Dezorah of Tesor Madala, for the Gemara says, Sefer Betzira Tana Tesfo, which means, as it says on the side of the Gemara in the Gilion, it says that Pshat is like this, that the meaning, when you write the Posig, you write the way it says in the Posig, Chaser, like Moshe, you never write Moshe with a Vov, or Lema, you don't write with a Vov. But the Tana, his meaning is to always write Mole, not to write Chaser. And I think that some chuvas or some Rabbon and Paskum based on that, that you have to write a shtar also, but that I'm not so 100% sure. But the Gemara definitely says this, that the Tana would always write Moli. So, Lechura, maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe the Rebbe meant this Gemara, that even though in Posik it says Moli, Echoser, but when you write it out, you have to write Moli. In another place, the Rebbe writes a different klal, maybe it's connected, that when you're writing without Nekudas, then you should write Mole. 
And since we write everything without Nakudas, you should write Molish, so it should be, I guess, easier to read. But this time, what the Rebbe said, that it says in the Gemara, that even though in Posik it says, Chaser, when you write it, and I think he used the word Ashtar, but I guess the same thing would apply when you write a Sefer, you have to write it Moli. I want to mention a few things that we saw when we started working on the Kutusichas, the way the Rebbe's gang was that taught things how to do it. So I just want to mention a few of those things. First of all, we saw sometimes that the Rebbe didn't want this to put in complicated things. He even wrote twice, I remember, he wrote, or why are you sending me and why are you giving in such complicated things? And the Rebbe and nevertheless was Magia, but he didn't want it to be complicated things. We also saw when the Rebbe crossed out, and if in the line, in the word, amongst the words that he crossed out was HaKadosh Baruch or things like that, the Rebbe would not cross out that word. He crossed out the line, but in those words, he just circled around it, the Hemshuk to the crossing out of the rest of the words, we knew that he wanted to cross out. Now, he wanted these things should be written clear. We saw that when it wasn't so clear, he would make it clear. You could see from the Rebbe that he wanted not to write anything unless you look it up, because the Rebbe himself, would they say from inside that the Rebbe would not write any maramoklim unless he looked it up. But we saw it even from the Hagoah, that whenever he was mighting something, and obviously he didn't look it up, he'd write on the side, la'ayim bifnim. Remember once he wrote a lotion of the Radvaz, and he wrote on the side, la'ayin ha-loshen bifnim. In other words, looking, and actually it was exactly the lotion the way the Rebbe wrote it. But he wanted it should be checked up. So anything before you write, you have to check up, and that's what the Rebbe did. And another thing that the Rebbe showed us is that he did not like when you write, write extreme expressions, like kosher ma'id. He would cross out many times the word ma'id. On something he would write, godl ma'id. He would cross out the word ma'id. Uh, ain't a moving klal. I'm just giving examples. He would cross out the word klal. These extreme words, which from that we understand that if there ever was an extreme word that was there, must have been taki really extreme. But like this, the klal was never to, to go into these extreme things. And just another example that a few times and the Rebbe changed from it said tzorich lahovin. So the Rosh is usually tzadik lamet. But the Rebbe changed a few times to tzadik lamet hey base because tzadik lamet could mean tzorich lahovin, tzorich liyas, tzorich lases. It could be anything. So the Rebbe to make sure. So then that's from this. Since then we started writing tzorich lahovin, tzadik lamet hey base on our own. Another example. Once made a maramokim of Encyclopedia Talmudis. So it was written, Re'ei Aleph Tov, Rosh is Aleph Tov. So the Rebbe circled around it and made a question mark. In other words, who will understand what Aleph Tov is? He wants it to write it out. So anytime there was something that's not clear, the Rebbe wanted it to be written out clearly, not written in Rosh Tevis. These are some of the things that we saw by the Hago of the Rebbe. Another thing that comes to mind when we saw that the Rebbe wrote something and he asked us to check it up to say, make sure that the lotion is exact as it's written. The Rebbe in the Ha'orah wrote, quoted from the Sefer Resise Laila from Reb Tzodek Hakein of Lublin, I think in the section called Shara Chalaymas. Imagine, who knows by heart what it says in that Sefer. And the Rebbe quoted it and wrote the lotion. But then he wrote on the side, you have to check it up. You should check up to see the lotion exact. And Lepel, when we checked it up, it was Kimad the Loshen Ozbos, like it says. I think a difference in one word, but Bederach Klal from theirs. So here we saw also that the Rebbe wanted to check it up, but how that Lepel Mamish, it was Kimat exactly as it's written there. Another thing that we saw by working in the Sichas is that by the Rebbe, if you wanted to show Hakora Satev, it wasn't like giving you a vacation or something, but it was Adara, but giving you more work. And this is what we saw from our work in the Sichas when he gave us the job of the, uh, printing the Kesa Shem Tev. It happened that when we prepared the Sikha to Parsha Vaira and Tov Shalam the Gimel, which is printed in Chilik, Yud Aleph, look at the Sikhas, when we prepared it, this was basically the first time we wrote a more complicated Rasha. And we were actually nervous if we wrote it good or not, because we were just new, not so experienced, and maybe the Rebbe would not be so happy about it. We didn't know, so we were very nervous till it came out. The Pale, we got a, a told that Rabbi Chadok wants to see us. So a few of us, myself, Rabbi uh, Kaplan, and a few more of the members of the Vad, were, uh, went into Rabbi Chadukah. We were very nervous because we thought that probably he's going to tell us that the Rebbe was upset at the way the Sikha was written because we were very nervous. The pale, it was the opposite. 
When we walked in, first thing he says, he gave us the sikha. The Rebbe was Magia. The sikha, and here it is, which is a chidush because the other times the Rebbe didn't give the sikha to us through Rabbi Chadakov. He gave it to the Rebbe Yom and Klein, through Rabbi Label Groner, but not to Rabbi Chadakov himself. This time the Rebbe gave it through Rabbi Chadakov. So Rabbi Chadakov gave us the sikha and he said, This is the sikha Mugia for Eiro. And then he said that because the Rebbe wants to show you Hakora Satev appreciation for the fact that you're working on the sikhas, the Rebbe is giving you a job that you should print the, the Kesar Shem Tev, and he gave a, a deadline, should be by Chavdal Latavis, it should be finished, and, you should, and he gave us some instructions how to do, what things to do about the work in the Kesar Shem Tev. So here we saw that if the Rebbe wants to show appreciation, he gives you more work, that means that now you're ready to do more. And later we also saw when the Hagdama was printed, was given into the Rebbe to be printed for the Kesar Shem Tev, we also saw the Rebbe's sensitivity there, because there, after a certain section that says that that section was made, was collected and Mesudir, and it gave few names. It says that the names Rabari Leib Kaplan, Rabbi Leib Shapiro, Rabbi Nachman Shapiro, Rabbi Shnei Azalman Yitzchok Yeshua Chanin. That the way the list was written when it was given into the Rebbe to be Megia, the names were not in the same order. There was one name that was different. Why? Because at that time he was still a Bocher, so we thought that if he's a Bocher, his name should be at the end. The other ones were in the light. And when the Rebbe was Magia, he changed it. He even put himself into the details of which name comes first, and he changed it, so that it should be according to the Aleph base. That's why Rabbi Ari Leib is first an Aleph, Rabbi Yudha Leib is a Yud, and Rabbi Nachman is a Nun, and Rabbi Shneel Zalman Chanin, which is a Shin. And Rabbi changed it, should be sensitive that no one should feel that he is less or something different, because... The Rebbe wanted, you know, to make everyone feel that they, they're part in... That's why I understand. That's what we understood then. That everyone has a part. So the sensitivity of the Rebbe to the Yochid was seen here. And in, also in connection to Lukut because the whole Kesa Shem Tev that was given to work came through Lukut